Sorry. Okay, let's continue where we left off yesterday. So we're discussing the definition of a garment and you're not allowed to wear, okay. If you're wearing garments in an unusual manner, in a way that uh, people will make fun of you, like you said, you wear a box over your head or something like that, that you're afraid you're gonna be taking it off, that you'll take it off in the middle of in the street and so on, so it's not good. But you have sometimes two identical, sometimes people wear two layers. Like some people wear two pairs of socks. They'll wear two uh, shirt. I mean, whatever, blouses, whatever, because then they do it layers for warmth. So even though it's interesting, even though it's hot outside, that normally you wouldn't wear it in that type of weather, you're still allowed to do it. For instance, so halachically, if it's 100 degrees outside and you wear a winter coat, it's not a problem. A winter coat is a garment. It doesn't matter. Once it's a garment, it doesn't matter whether, when you wear it. It's the normal thing. In fact, it's an interesting thing. Uh, according to Kabbalah, you know, on Shabbos, you're not supposed to go outside with a silk kapota, with silk. So it's interesting. I mean, in the later years, it didn't matter because the Rebbe stayed in 770. But when the Rebbe used to go home Shabbos, no matter it was 100 degrees outside, the Rebbe always wore a thing, a coat. Shabbos, whenever he was in the street, Shabbos he always wore a coat over this, over the kapata. It was a Kabbalah thing. Huh? Okay, anyway. Now, what happened? What happened you, now the question is like this. Are you allowed to wear sleeves rolled up? Now the question is, is that rolled up part actually like carrying? So this is, Ramesha Feinstein says, you really, sh this is what they bring down there. He says you shouldn't wear like, but everybody says you could. Everybody says you're allowed to wear, or if a, if a, a coat is too, or a pair of pants is too long or something, and you cuff it up, you know, just to make it shorter. So even though that's really not necessary for the, be for the garment, but that's part of the garment. So you're allowed to wear it that way no matter what. Um, like we said yesterday, wearing a jacket over the sleeves, some opinions say you shouldn't do it, most opinions say you'd be allowed to wear it. Over the what? Over the shoulders. I said over the shoulders, even if you don't put the sleeves in, because many people do wear jackets like that, you know, over the sleeve, over the, um, over the shoulders. Now, but because, let's say, nobody wears one belt on top of another belt, that's what we got into yesterday. So therefore, you can't wear, forget a gartel, a mikveh, towel. Just if somebody wants to wear two belts, that you're not allowed to wear. But, Moshe, the question is, can you wear suspenders and a belt? Now, most people don't wear both. But logically, it seems that you would be allowed to wear both because they're both garments, and the, belt, the pants are entitled to a belt. And, uh, and, there, and you can wear the suspenders, so it's not an issue. Um, now, okay, um, okay gar garments, like you said, garments that might fall off a person, garments that are so loose, that might just fall off the person, you're not allowed to wear them on Shabbos, unless if, you know, they, you're wearing them in such a way that the, the taka won't fall off. Fall off. Um, for instance, it says, you can't wear, you shouldn't wear a loosely fit hat, a loosely fitted hat, because it might just fly off in the wind and you're gonna to come to carry it. So some people write that if that's your yarmulke also, then it doesn't matter because then you, you're not gonna just carry it because you need to keep on your head. But, but basically more people are lenient about this. Okay, now what about things that are part of a garment that you're not actually using? For instance, you have a coat or, or, or a sweatshirt, let's say, that has a hood. But I'm not going to put the hood over my head. I'm just going to let it hang down in the back. So even though seemingly that's, you know, it's carrying because I'm not using that hood, but because it's part of the garment, so you're allowed to wear it. Or many times people have on their coats, they have a, a belt around the coat. So many times you buckle the belt. Sometimes you just, people walk in the street, they just let the belt hang loose. So then it's also not an issue because it's actually part of the garment itself. The same thing, this is different opinions about most people are lenient. Like you have spare buttons at the bottom of a shirt, they sew in spare buttons. 
So some people say you're not allowed to go out with that in Shabbos because it's no purpose in them. But most opinions say that there's no problem going out with spare buttons in Shabbos because when it's, the garment is made, it's made as an accessory of the garment and it's so basically bottled to the garment, it's nullified to the garment, so that's not an issue. How big does it have to be? Does what? How big, what size does the item have to be that's considered carrying? Any amount. Oh, any amount? No, it depends. Any amount is biblically forbidden on Shabbos. Now, certainly the whole peric in, in Mesafta Shabbos is how much do you have to carry out? So basically, for instance, food has X amount size, which is considered food. Other things, but that's only to get death penalty, chayv misa, or kor mechatas. But any amount that a person carries out, as insignificant as it is, it's still biblically forbidden on Shabbos in a place where you're biblically not allowed to carry it. So it's practically speaking, there's not, what? Well, like hanging a sweater on your shoulders with the sleeves. Again, it's not that much different than a jacket. People do walk around the streets like that. You know, with a sweater with the yeah. sleeves hanging out, uh, hanging down in front. An overcoat that, that comes with the belt? Huh? An overcoat that comes with the belt? I said that, no? Yeah, I'm just double checking. If, even if it's not in use, it's just Even if it's not used, it's, in, it's hanging, but it's not part of the garment. What? You have, like, hair stuck to your... No, that's not... So you have anything stuck to your clothes? No. That's it's not cool, okay, because you don't want it there. No Let me ask you a different there. question. No you walk in the street when it rains. I mean, All right. let me ask you, you allowed to walk in the street with rain on your coat? Yeah. Why? <laughs> because... Uh, <laughs> no, is, 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 is there something like a certain shear? Like get like a dust ball or something? No, it's a certain no. no, not if you don't want Rabbi, If you step in mud and there's a thick coating on the shoe, are you allowed to walk then? Is that considered... Yeah, you can walk. The only question is, when you get to your house and the mud dries, you can't scrape it against metal because then you're grinding the earth, which is one of the Lama Tess Malachas. Carrying is not a problem. It's not, so, it's not such an... And when it rains, what do you do? What? So if... Maybe you have to stay inside when it rains. What? I remember when we went to the Mikvah, we had to go to the beach because we were at Shabbaton. They told us that in, in the water itself, it should dry off. Like, when you get up, don't move. Yeah. Right up there. That's because of carrying the water on your body. That's not part of the garment. Right. So I'm saying if it's on your body, that's then it's carrying. It's carrying. Yeah. So, and when you rain, when you go into your sucking way, it says just says in Allah that if you go in after a rainstorm, you have to be careful when you take your clothes off, you shouldn't come to squeeze the liquid, the water out of the garment, which is squeezing. And you can't hang up the, the coat in a place where you normally hang clothes to dry because it says people will think that you washed it on Shabbos. But no, on the body, that's called carrying water. That's not, it says in that's not an issue. What? Carrying a sweatshirt around the waist. What is that? Tying the sweatshirt around the waist. Again, the fact that people a lot of times wear it that way. See people in the street, they're going uh, with the. Uh, see, even though it's not the normal way of doing it, but the fact that a number, a lot of people do it, it becomes halachically normal that you would be allowed to do it in Shabbos. So it's more so kids. Huh? Kids are also people, believe it or not. Okay. Okay. Um, now, shh. Or I'll give you another example. You can walk out with a coat that's unbuttoned, or your jacket's unbuttoned, even though you're not using the buttons. It doesn't matter because it's part of the pocket. You're not using the pocket. And uh, why isn't that carrying? Because it's actually, shh. It's actually part of the garment itself. Now, um, but, for instance, um, okay, things that are not part of the garment we said, um, shirt, collar, oh, some, some people put you know, those stiffeners into the collar. Yeah, you know, the, the collar stays. The collar should stay, yeah. yeah. Stays. So, so that's part of the baguette. That becomes part of the garment, so it's not called carrying on Shabbos. 
All these things that are secondary, or a person has, let's say, shoulder pads. I don't mean football shoulder pads. I mean shoulder pads you have in the garment, whatever. Or, or I'll tell you another example. Shh. Some people, sometimes you have, let's say, um, I myself person was a boche, it was a kid. I had this shine in New York. Um, sometimes the shoe is too big on you, let's say. And you want to put in an insole into the shoe. Or you want to put some paper in, let's say, your boots, your galoshes are too big. So you want to put paper in, you know, at the end that it shouldn't fall off your feet. Some people have a high arch. Or whatever. Yeah, but that, okay. But even the paper, which is worse, by the way, putting the paper in the galoshes that just should fit, and okay, it's not part of the shoe, but nevertheless, I mean, I was told by Big Rav when I was a Bachet that to put it in before Shabbos. But in, once it is part of the garment, and therefore it's not called carrying, it's not a separate entity, it's actually part of the garment. A uh, tie clip. It's interesting. In our circles, you know, for those that are young, there's something called a tie clip. That's it's a pin. That they don't know what it is. A tie clip. You know what a tie clip is? The old guys know. He knows what it is. It's like a little pin, a decorative pin that holds the tie not only to each to itself, but to the shirt that it doesn't go flying all over the place. So logically, you'd be allowed to wear that on Shabbos. It's part of the garment. In our circles, we didn't. But, but in halachically, you'd be allowed to wear it on Shabbos because it's part of the garment. Even if you never wear Yeah, but if you're wearing it, it's part of the garment. doesn't matter if you... If somebody never wears a tie, are they allowed to wear a tie? Absolutely. You said if you never wear glasses, you should wear No, that's because you might take it off. Glasses that you don't always wear... Those types of glasses, you put on and off, on and off, on and off. So we're afraid in the middle of the street, you're going to take it off. Like we said, sunglasses and all those types of things. Yes, sometimes the hat is too big. So they put in tape inside the hat to, to make it, huh? Foam snips to make the hat fit better. Again, that's all part of the hat. So that's not a feather, Rabbi. They put a feather on the cat. Can the first person use a cane? One second. If it's a feather that you do for decorative purposes, there are those that are matter, there are those that permit it, that some people say you shouldn't do it. What? In your circle, What? In your circle, does it allow What, feathers in the hat? Only if it's sewn into the hat. Like they have pins, now the new hats have little, these little, little pins in the hat. So uh, again, it's part of the hat, it's part of the design of the hat. So that wouldn't be a problem well, carrying, the fe- wearing it. Have the Somebody, uses Somebody uses a cane on Shabbos. It, we're going to get into that. That's not to do with garments. But the bottom line of the cane in a place where there's no aid if, if in the house the person walks with a cane, they're allowed to walk with a cane in the street. If they don't wear, use the cane in the house, halachically, then they cannot use the cane in the street. The same thing, let's say a person that has a wheelchair. Again, we're not talking about a native situation. A person who, or, or I mean, sorry, uh, a walker. A walker before we get to a wheelchair. A person has a walker. So again, we're speaking of a situation where there's no native. So if the person in the house walks with the walker, there's a clear in Shkhnarch. If the person in the house walks with the walker, so that becomes like their feet. So then they can wear it. You can use a cane on Shabbos in that case. But if in the house you walk around without it, that means you really don't need it to mamish walk, so it's not your foot, and then it would be carrying on Shabbos in the case where there's no aid. Crutches, crutches. Same thing with crutches. Now, if a person, God forbid, broke their foot, and they need crutches, and the crutches they wear use in the house also, so then you're allowed to use them in the street. Otherwise not. What? The wheelchair, again, if a person needs a wheelchair and they're always confined to a wheelchair, they're allowed to wheel themselves in the wheelchair. The, the motorized ones, they have now the ones that you're allowed to use in Shabbos. In Israel, they made... I know people here that haven't... Uh, they're, 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 it's based on a concept of grum or whatever, but it's a complicated halachic issue that not everybody agrees with, but Shlom Zaman Erebach permitted it. 
So, uh, by the regular wheelchair, a person can wheel themselves. Goodbye. Marvin. Goodbye. Excuse me? A person could you wheel themselves. But somebody else pushing them, that's a shy of carrying. So again, if there's no aid, you can't have a Jew push you. A guy would be allowed to push you to go to shul. Only a man. Huh? Only a man. It depends. Sometimes a woman also, depending what the situation is. If a woman needs to, if it's a mitzvah for the woman to be in shul, or it's a mental health mm. issue for her to be in shul, then there's a hatred for it. But that's only people that are sick, not a regular healthy person. First day Shavuos can never fall out of Shabbos. So it's not an issue. What if she's healthy and says, I don't go to shul, I'm going to go mental. Let her open a shul in her house. Okay.